Hello and welcome back to this amazing podcast series uh, on the state of affairs. I have again reappeared uh, and resumed my podcasting uh, for a week now and uh, I have had a friend and also a guest on the today's podcast. Uh, she is Mahak Fatima and happens to be uh, a podcaster as well and 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 has uh, is just studying in uh, his master her, her masters in international relations normally we would co- uh, conduct conversations that uh, we do on uh, specialized areas of interest of the guests and and apart from that the researchers that appear on our podcast uh, and share a stage with us uh, normally we do conduct on on specific areas but today is absolutely a different at Iran all together i'm being joined by someone uh, who is a student yet apart from that she's also appeared on few of the podcasts as an anchor uh, now that she shares the same territory of international relations as an uh, in academics i decided to invite her on this podcast mac welcome on the on this state of affairs podcast thank you so much for inviting me to this discussion state for fast it's a pleasure to be here and share my insights with you all thank you so much i mean uh, i came across uh, a post by uh, one of my friends uh, who shared about uh, your, your conversation with him um, yeah. i mean mm-hmm. a, a month or so back i decided that i'll go and invite this person now that she is a new uh, face i i uh, got introduced with via the social media so how is it uh, to appear on my podcast First of all as I told earlier I'm really happy to appear in your podcast being a podcaster and meeting other one it's a uh, very very exciting for me and yeah I'm very happy to share my thoughts with you and for the viewers uh, who would watch this conversation I would like to uh, talk about this fact that she is from Wayanad Wayanad is important for two things uh, a uh, Rahul Gandhi is contesting from this seat yeah. is is an important topic in the national politics apart from that also wayanad is in kerala uh, normally uh, people up north will would uh, just get the idea by uh, you know aligning it with sashi tharoor and also uh, wayanad because normally it, it has uh, just appeared in the political discourse of our country and people have been talking about it so she is from the same constituency wayanad i would like to get her uh, inputs on the elections first because this podcast is recorded uh, just two days short of uh, elect- election results of 24 uh, parliamentary elections in india so how is it mac uh, how do you evaluate as a student of political science or international relations how do you evaluate wayanad as a constituency how has uh, rahul gandhi's uh, introduction uh, in their wayanad and contesting from the how has it added uh, to your uh, experiences Okay sure so as you have told I'm from Kerala so we all know that Kerala is a place which is very famous for its vibrant political landscape so from a very young age onwards I also got very much interested in politics because here in Kerala especially in my place Wayanad each and every one will be having their own politics or they will be following a particular political ideology or a party so even if we are going to our gathering or uh, somewhere everywhere we can see a debate or discussions on politics is happening so coming into the election of course here we have our candidate uh, rahul gandhi so yeah here the whole nation is looking into our constituency but you know that uh, why not as a place which is always termed as a uh, very underdeveloped one this is a hilly area here we have mostly tribal people as the majority of the population but yeah when rahul gandhi came here that's the time when we got a lot of recognition even to a national level so coming to election of course we have strong leaders here from all these parties from left right and every in, from each parties we have strong um, candidates here so yeah i'm also excited to know the results we have a strong uh, support to a particular po- political party here in wayanad for sure so i don't want to reveal it i think almost no, no, everyone knows no, that i mean it's it, i mean all yeah. the people uh, who share the social media landscape they know that why well, yeah in, everyone in, knows uh, that the prominence of a communist party so okay yes. fine good 
So we are waiting excited, like we are very excited to know the results. Okay. And what about Kashmir? You're from yeah, Jammu. Uh, um, especially uh, in our part of the country, uh, there were three parliamentary uh, three seats, parliamentary constituency seats, and normally, uh, uh, traditionally, people would vote either for, uh, I mean, mostly for the national conference. That's the regional party over here, and uh, is a dominant political force in our uh, political system. And this time around, we have a delimitation a couple of years before, and then. Uh, that has actually redrawn the boundaries of the constituencies. Uh, okay. it, earlier, it seemed like at the at the very face of it, when elections were announced uh, for different constituencies, uh, most of the people would talk about uh, it's a it's a win win game for national conference. But then over the time, once the nominations were filled, we have had three constituencies. One uh, is for uh, uh, one is Anantanag, and second is. Uh, Srinagar and third is Baramula constituencies. With two constituencies, all the exit polls do suggest that a national conference will, uh, you know, take away the two seats, uh, Srinagar and uh, Anantanag. But when it comes to Baramula seats, it has it has become more of an interest for most of the political analysts because uh, there are three people who are you know contesting for this, uh, three important people. Otherwise, there are twenty nominations around and. Uh, there are three spots that exit polls have given. Either it will be national conference because the vice president of the party has uh, decided to contest from this Baramula constituency. And second, we have a people's conference uh, candidate uh, and also president, uh, Mr. Sajad Lone. He is also contesting from the same seat. And again, there is one more person uh, who, who happens to be in jail but uh, has also filed his nominations. and. With every with 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 each passing day, people uh, do change their opinions about the seat. But uh, to my understanding, as a student of political science and as the person who uh, hails from the same place, uh, my thing is either it will be uh, Omar Abdullah who will take uh, the seat and and who will win the seat, or there will be uh, the person Engineer Rashid uh, who is also contesting as a third important candidate. Uh, either he will win, but then yeah, there is a swing vote. There are there's a cross voting that has happened at many places. Uh, although Sajad Lone hails from the same place, I mean, from the same constituency, Handwada, it's it's uh, in the Baramla constituency itself. Uh, there were, you know, uh, uh, diversion of opinions, so much stratification at the political level. But yeah, exit polls do uh, just take it seriously. Other two seats, everybody knows that they will go to the national conference, but this Baramla constituency seat, has become important because three of the important political players uh, are contesting for the same seat. Uh, that's yeah. that's that's all about Baramula. Yeah, that's nice. When it comes to Jammu, when it comes to Jammu uh, on one particular seat, uh, uh, the, the exit polls show that maybe that will go to again uh, Congress, and the other uh, seat will go to uh, BJP. Uh, yeah, and when it comes to Ladakh, the erstwhile part of uh, Jammu and Kashmir state. Uh, people say that the independent uh, candidate is winning there, but oh, that has okay. certain uh, people do say that he'll join either national conference or the uh, Congress. So yeah, I mean, all this is happening. Uh, this election was important for many reasons because for the first time after a long period of around 20 to 30 years, uh, such a mass shoot turnout has uh, occurred and happened uh, because uh, it, it was around 60% polling. Uh, that's a massive, massive thing when it comes to Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, okay. But coming so, to Kerala, I don't think we have a very good polling this year. Uh, how, how much it's was relatively it? Relatively less. Okay. No, because we, we were not having uh, elections for last uh, seven, eight years in the realist, uh, in the real sense. But yeah, this okay. time around, most of the people, youngsters, have voted. So it's it's like enriching the democracy. That's my takeaway. Okay. Uh, apart, apart from that, uh, you have uh, chosen international relations as a subject and a field of study. Yeah. May I know the reasons. May I know what what, what uh, drew you to this? Sure, sure. So as I said earlier, uh, being a person who is coming from Kerala, I was always interested in politics from a very young age onwards. So 
as I was growing up, I was surrounded by various discussions about politics and different different viewpoints from different people. So which actually made me interested in politics. So I actually witnessed the two sides of politics, both, both its positive contribution to society as well as the challenges posed by the violence and anonymity among the political factions. So that's how I got interested in politics. After that, uh, I was also interested in learning political science. So I, after completing my matriculation, I chose humanities for my higher education. And yeah, that was the time when I used to get a lot of negative comments from the society uh, and from my friends at all. We know that in India, there is a system which is always existing or a trend is there uh, that is after completing the matriculation studies, the people who scored good marks will go forward with science for their higher education and the medium scored students will go forward with commerce and finally the least scored will go forward with humanity. So that's that's what the people used to tell me. Uh, but I actually scored a very good marks. But uh, the reason that I chose humanities was I was very much passionate about civil service. So I found uh, choosing humanities will help me in my UPSC preparations. And also I was interested in social science. So that's how I started learning political science. And other than that, I was also very much interested in public speaking. So I was a kind of a person who always wanted to improve my skills, especially the communication skills. So I started listening to famous uh, speeches delivered by world famous leaders and experts from different fields. So one day my mom told me to listen to some of the speeches which are delivered by Dr. Shashi Tharoor. So then I started listening to some of his speeches. And yeah, with an ultimate aim to just improve my vocabulary and my accent. But when I started listening to his speeches, I found that he's someone who is very unique from other political leaders because I found he's actually having an uncommon blend of scholarly excellence as well as a political acumen, which attracted me a lot. So yeah, then after that, I started exploring Tarur's biography and I, I also read some of his books. So that's the time when I came across international relations. So I found that he done his master's in international relations from Tufts University. And also he done his PhD also in IR, which was a very new area for me. So I was super thrilled by seeing his excellent career. We all knew that he had a three decades of experience working with the UN, which is one of the world's highest authority. So that's uh, that's what actually inspired me a lot. I also saw that he served the highest positions like the under general secretary of UN. And also he was nominated for the position of secretary general to UN. And he also worked with UNHCR, then peacekeeping operation departments, etc. So for me personally, all these were very exciting as well as a new knowledge. So I also started searching more about career in UN and I came across uh, various organizations which is coming under UN like UNICEF, UNESCO, UNHCR, HRC, UN, UN, etc. So yeah, that's how I decided to just go away from the traditional careers that uh, almost every student in our Indian society used to choose like medicine, engineering, teaching and all. So I was very much inspired by the vast opportunities that our UN is offering to the youngsters like me. So that's how I started to dream big and that's how I ended up in IR. That's an interesting story, isn't it? Yeah. And what about you, Maharaj? Uh, my How thing is like, it's always, you know, basically, uh, I have, uh, you know, completed my uh, schooling and also the, the bachelor's and master's from the, from my own state, uh, from a university, University of Kashmir, uh, my bachelor's and master's. And after that, I decided to go with the civil services. I went down to Delhi and then uh, spent some four or five years over there. That's where I actually come came across uh, you know, meaningfully with the international relations because of the foreign policy and IRS kind of stuff. Uh, after that, I couldn't make it to the civil services. I came back and uh, joined a private school. Uh, my my parents told me that 
this you know we didn't raise you we didn't uh, give you birth to teach in a private school we wanted to have get your government job and then also that's a normal you know normal understanding of things uh, in our part of the world but yeah after teaching for four or five years i have had a certain constituency of students that i love to interact with well coincidentally i came across uh, this international relations in the civil services itself because there is a particular segment that we have to prepare for uh, uh, india's relations with other countries india's foreign policy history blah 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 uh, that basically uh, helped me to grow an interest for this and i got some books uh, went through them and also i listened to most of the diplomats uh, i was particularly drawn to west asian region because of uh the 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 opportunities for researchers and analysts and also for uh, diplomats that it offers uh to deal with day-to-day -day, uh, developments in the region and the importance of the region for india especially yeah uh, that having been said uh, second thing that drew me uh, to this international relations was uh, my personal uh, understanding of how to approach my academic career ahead uh, because I was fascinated by mostly the realistic school of thought. Uh, okay. Now, because, because normally Jammu and Kashmir state is not known only for having a political system that was volatile, that apart from that, there were also security concerns. I mean, uh, we have had seen it in, in 1947. We have seen it in, in 1970s also. Apart from that, we also saw it in 1990s earlier. Uh, and after that, in 2000 in 2000s uh, later part and yeah always in the news always uh, for things i thought that i'll at least from my uh, personal experiences i i was drawn and attracted towards this to have to have a understanding uh, of the of, of things like security of things like uh, terrorism of things like uh, you know international relations how the global powers uh, basically structure the uh, uh, regional geopolitics these are the things that helped me in bits and pieces to have had a, uh, uh, to, have, to develop an interest for international relations. And then I also have uh, done a bit of research with ORF. Uh, apart from that, I with the break of the COVID, uh, I thought that I'll have a podcast of my own. I started with uh, a simple understanding. Although uh, people who have watched all the 90 podcasts so far might have seen me uh, improvising on different things in the first uh, because podcasting and camera shyness is is something that uh, I have lived with for around 25 years so yeah I mean these are things but then I uh, believed that I was not on the wrong side of things I thought that I'll, I'll, I'll choose a different path currently I have a small academy where I teach students of my oh, town yeah, that's nice yeah. it's in Java yeah, it's in it's in Kashmir itself. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. It's Kashmir. Okay. Yeah, and uh, apart from that, I would also uh, love to uh, know from you uh, any particular interests in in some specific areas of international relations or regional geopolitics or things, anything like that. Yeah, sure, sure. So we all know that IR is like an ocean, right? We yeah. have a lot of things to explore. And I just started to explore some areas. So being uh, the world is very wide, we do have a lot of area studies. So I'm very much interested in South Asian studies, West Asian studies, and also African studies. These are some of the areas I like to explore. Other than those, we do have a lot of interdisciplinary subjects coming under IR. So I like uh, India's foreign policy. For sure. I think we're also uh, very much interested in this area. So India's foreign policy is something always it attracted me a lot because we actually can see a clear transformation that India has gone uh, from Nehru's era to Modi's era, from the uh, optimistic non-alignment to the energy diploma, uh, the energetic diploma C. Uh, India's transformation from non-alignment to multi-alignment. And that's quite interesting to clearly see our country's growth. And the next area is, of course, diplomacy. Uh, I dream to be a, a diplomat. So yeah, of course, I'm interested in diplomacy, um, humanitarian diplomacy in particular. 
Other than this, I also address the theories and realism, uh, theories in IR, especially realism, as you have told. Offensive realism is something which always attracted me a lot because we can actually connect a lot of things which is currently happening in our world with the offensive realism, right? Yeah, that's something interesting. Other than this, um, I'm also interested in international security studies, mainly the theoretical parts like the critical theory, well school, all these things are also very interesting for me. Yeah, and then coming into, of course, my area, humanitarian affairs. This is also coming under IR for sure. Yeah, um, I really wanted to explore more on the humanitarian crisis which is happening in our world. We, we can clearly see the number of uh, crises are increasing day by day and the need for providing aid is also very, very important. Connecting to this, I also like to uh, go deep into human rights as well as gender equality. That's all about my areas of interest. And how about you? Uh, about me, I would like to add one more thing to my earlier uh... Uh, you know, answer of uh, why international relations? Because in international relations, we normally do a, a top top down approach of looking at uh, things and looking at national politics, then to the local politics, and also looking at how a country uh, imports and exports things and how it leverages and maneuvers through. Uh, so yeah. that's why also uh, an adding point to, to to what I said you earlier. And when when it comes to specialized area of interest, yeah, security uh, basically, and then. Uh, looking at the region of West Asia, because uh, most of the times, and I mean, for uh, 70 odd years now, uh, it has shaped India's foreign policy and India's security uh, architecture uh, in terms of because uh, most of the, you know, cross border terrorism do stem from this region of uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and also across. So, yeah, I mean, West Asia has always been a fascinating place, but then there's a mushroom growth of analysts and and uh, you know um, uh, people who love uh, studying and looking at uh, west asia from geopolitical perspective so my thing also uh, is 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 driven to this uh, west asian region uh, especially uh, uh, after the mandate system uh, of 90s uh, 40s 19 uh, late 1940s uh, 50s so that's the thing that I mostly look at. Uh, apart from that, I also have produced a paper on uh, Gulf countries, especially the Qatar uh, and its uh, political system. So, uh, I mean, to my understanding, both West Asia and South Asia are connected for many reasons. Geographically speaking, that's okay that most of the people understand. But yeah, uh, there is also something that connects it, that security uh, architecture, security uh, you know, uh, security discourse of the region, of both regions, uh, because these both countries share the Muslim population, these both countries share the cultural relations, these both uh, countries share uh, the Asian century dream. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's how it is. Uh, West Asia, yeah, I mean, South Asia for most of the reasons of security, but basically West Asia, uh, because um, I do read a lot about this region, the people who are experts in this from different think tanks, from you know outsiders who, who look at it from their perspective, and uh, people in India, we have a good number of experts on this particular region of West Asia. So yeah, that's my uh, you know specialized area of interest I look into. But then podcasting has helped me to look at East Asia, look at Europe, look at uh, Asia, you know Asia as well, look as well to Africa, and also look at the South Asian geopolitics, the water. Uh, the security and 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 also the uh, ocean po geopolitics. So yeah, all things have, this podcast has helped me to you know diversify and also help to understand uh, most of the regions because there have been a good number of researchers and uh, young scholars who have appeared on my podcast. That has helped me also because once I conduct a podcast, I do prepare a, present, a presentation. So I come across lots of things on 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 internet and also. Uh, why are the books? Why are the research papers? And yeah, that's helped me to have an understanding of this region. I'm a student, a learner. Uh, yeah, that's from my side. But with this podcast, I haven't prepared a presentation because uh, I thought that it, it's a conversation between two uh, students of international relations and also yeah. uh, two podcasters. Uh, and also that this is important because you are sp speaking from absolute south. 
extreme south and yes i'm yeah, from, from north, north. but <laughs> not this, this this thing has not to do with anything with north south debate but yeah i mean uh, geographies uh, actually do help in 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 understanding uh, the local issues and also the yes. local cultures I haven't been to Kerala yet, but yeah, I'm planning. Uh, me someday. too. I I didn't visit Kashmir, and it's my dream. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. And we have seen a, a huge uh, increase in the number of tourists uh, for last coming to Kashmir. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, most of the people have even uh, rented their houses. That's how uh, things basically are. Uh, the 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 increase, absolute increase in the number of tourists. Uh, especially in summer in winter because uh, down is there any problem as the number of tourists are increasing i haven't seen i haven't looked into that aspect of it but yeah i mean uh, it helps to the mo into the mobility of uh, this geographical landmass uh, because okay. the the demand for new uh, civic services the demand for new connectivity the railway grid also the transport the roads and also the uh, you know housing construction facilities that's all happening although okay. there are some climate concerns but that that's for the climate activists and people who look into the climate change that's not mm -hmm. for me because i'm 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 a simple person looking into the international relations from a security perspective yeah okay yeah uh, you, you if you anytime plan to visit kashmir do come over uh, yeah sure you are also always welcome to kerala Kerala has many things to offer. A, the 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 food uh, yeah. there is is different, and and also uh, I have a fascination to someday drop there and also you know uh, taste many of the foods. Apart from that, yeah. also the literacy rate uh, of your uh, state uh, is very high. Good. Yeah, which is all good. So all these things I want to basically understand from a very local perspective. And and what about this? Uh, um, what about the uh, book list that you have uh, with you on the table, or you will suggest? Okay, so first of all, I'm not a very good reader, but still, I used to read some of the best books which are suggested by my professors during my uh, graduate period. So, well, uh, to start with, I will suggest. 20 year crisis by eh cars this is a book i personally believe uh, a person who is interested in ir must begin with because we all know that war history is something very important for a person who is always interested in ir uh, to know more about uh, the things like world war one world war two cold war all these things are really really important so to begin with i personally suggest you to start with 20 year crisis and then uh, one of the very famous book, The Clash of Civilization and the Remaking of World Order by Samuel P. Huntington, which is one of the very famous book. So in this book, it mainly focuses upon the uh, conflicts which is arising uh, due to people's cultural and religious identities after the Cold War period. So that's what mainly Samuel is uh, concentrating in this book. And now uh, the next book would be The End of History and Last Man by Francis Fukuyama. So in this book, we know that it mainly focuses upon uh, the uh, after the disintegration of Soviet Union, we can see the liberal democracy became one of the very important form of government across the world. So in this book, he's arguing that after the dissolution of Soviet Union, a uh, liberal democracy is the final form of government for the world. And it is the end of the human ideological struggle. And next one would be the Kenneth Walls, Man, the War, and the State, a Theoretical Analysis. So this is a book which mainly focuses upon analyzing the reasons for the war in a clear and a concise manner. Next one would be, of course, being a person who is very much interested in offensive realism. The book by John Scheimer, The Tragedy of Great Power Politics. 
So this is a book which mainly focuses upon uh, the theory of offensive realism, in which he is stating his key assumptions, the evolution from the realist theory and its predictive capability. So throughout this book, he is arguing that the whole uh, nations are actually trying to maximize the power, and it's really it's really difficult to have a cooperation between the states. And next book, something related with international security would be Regions and Power, the Structure of International Security by Barry Boozen and Oli Weber. We know that these two people are very, very, very important uh, in international security. So, of course, this book is mainly focusing upon the regional patterns of security, um, as well as some of the theories which are related with international security. And next book would be Imperialism and uh, Developing World by Adul Kali. In this book, uh, he mainly focuses upon how Britain and US shaped the global periphery. So now the next two concepts which are very important in IR is, of course, the hard power and the soft power. So we know that soft power is equally important as hard power. So one of the book by Joseph F. Nye, that is the soft power, is a very, very, very good book to explore more about soft power in detail. Another one would be The Anonymity at Bay by Pallavi Raghavan. Uh, this is a book which mainly focuses upon India-Pak relations in the initial years. So to know more about uh, India-Pak relations, uh, you can go through this book. And next one would be the Pax Indica by Shashi Tarur. Of course, this is a very good book to know more about India's uh, relations with its library countries and John. So yeah, these are some of the books that I want to suggest to you all. That's, that's, uh, that's quite a classic IR student who has had an absolutely fascinating you know, love for uh, academic IR. Uh, yeah, that's quite, I mean, I hope that all the viewers do take note of uh, the list of the books who are beginners, who are students, and also apart from that, who are people who want to understand and translate all the names that you have mentioned from Mir Schumer to, uh, to Clash of Civilizations, Huntington, Fukuyama, whatever the names you have mentioned. And lastly, you have mentioned Pax Indica of Tharoor. Absolutely fascinating. And when it comes to my list of the books, I, I, I don't, I'm not into the pure academic. I don't read most of the pure academic IR theoretically. I mean, theoretical IR uh, writers. Uh, my thing is to mostly, you know, understand international relations and especially India's relations with other countries from the diplomat's perspective. Say, for example, Shashi Tharoor, say, for example, uh, T.C. Raghavan, say, for example, uh, S.J. Shankar, say, for example, uh, C. Raja Mohan uh, as well, and especially <clears throat> Shiv Shankar Menon. Uh, the books and the articles normally they do uh, write and have also written the books. I have had a good collection of all those and I have went through them. Uh, I may not be able to recall all the names, but yeah, my uh, way of my approach of uh, reading in India's relations with foreign countries and, and how world looks at uh, India uh, mostly stems from that. Uh, apart from that, I also do keep a close check on different uh, social media platforms uh, where we have a long list of uh, books every month, every week coming up. Uh, I, I guess uh, I may not have missed uh, uh, mo many of the books for last five, six years, especially when it comes to India's relations with other countries. I do order it. I pre-order basically uh, most of the books. And then I, in my time, although I'm not a voracious reader, I won't be, I would qualify to be one. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, how I understand because I have to, you know, just go through all this stuff that I do, the academy, the podcast, and also then getting a time. Then, I mean, also the family comes in. So very little, whatever the time I get, I do read all those pieces and books uh, that I have. Uh, I'll also attach, uh, if my time permitted, I'll also attach a, a list of books uh, uh, in, the, in the bio of this uh, on the YouTube. But yeah, I mean, there's also uh, an editor, senior editor with the Hindu, uh, Suhasini Haider. She also comes up with a podcast for the Hindu itself, uh, where at the last segment, she basically uh, enlists lots of books uh, that are in the market. And also, uh, from academic perspective, she introduces new books and also the books that students of international relations and Indian foreign policy must uh, cut through so that they understand uh, the basic dictums of it. 
So yeah, that's from my side. So I'm Anything also else? trying to read all these books for sure. Yeah, I mean also. Uh, Send me this list of books. I will try to because I'm also a student, so I need to explore more. Yeah, there are also people who, who talk on different issues. Say, for example, Abhijit Mitra. Say, for example, uh, Doctor uh, Professor Harshvi Pant. Uh, say, for example, uh, Swasti Rao from uh, Itsa. Uh, say, for example, uh, we have uh, Mr. Sushant Sreen, who is quite a credible voice on um, South Asian security uh, discourse, uh, especially the radicalism and terrorism. Uh, that's how it is, and. Also, uh, I do uh, read books of A.S. Dolat, uh, who was a former uh, chief of uh, IB and also has headed uh, RNAW for uh, for a year or two. I don't know. I don't rem uh, remember the correct tenure. But yeah, his books, I have had his own, all collection of Shiv Shankar men and also and many other authors. I may not be able to recall them, but yeah, I'll attach uh, a long list of books with this uh, podcast once it's published. Oh, yeah. uh, because because we are running out of time, maybe uh, we'll continue this conversation in our you know supplementary podcast. But at thirty-five minutes, uh, we're done with this. Anything else you want to add? And how do you come across? Uh, how did you come across with this name called the State of Affairs? The what the day when you <laughs> you texted me, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. The LinkedIn, that's the time when I just uh, searched for your YouTube channel. I saw in your bio regarding this, so I just went through your uh, YouTube channel and I saw a lot of good uh, discussions related with IR. So yeah, that's when I decided, okay, well, we need to do a discussion together because it, being an IR student, this is very helpful for me to get a lot of knowledge in different, different fields, because you have done a podcast in different, different areas, right? Which is very helpful for everyone who is very much passionate about IR. So yeah, that's how it is. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, I must sign off because I have to leave and go somewhere. The thing is that uh, I'll again uh, text to you once uh, we're done with this. Uh, election results and also uh, with new things that may come up possibly we may uh, you know collaborate on some other podcast where we can talk about the specialized area of interest and your uh, understanding of the region you're a you're a, you're a student uh, and pursuing your masters or will be about to pursue your masters good luck with that uh, apart Thank from you. that We'll be talking in that podcast about the different centers and opportunities and international relations because uh, yeah, we sure. shorted time uh, with this podcast. So, all that having been said and done, uh, thank you for coming to uh, to State of Affairs podcast. Uh, we wish you all the best, and you also uh, do tune in to watch our future conversations. With yeah, people. sure, sure. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. No, no, I'm also a student of international relations, so. It's always. Uh, but you have uh, a lot of experience than me, so I got I got an opportunity to learn more things from you, and new insights, new things. Okay, maybe I'll keep that as, as a compliment. And uh, <laughs> my understanding of uh, international history doesn't stem from classical academic perspective. I have basically a, a different tendency to understand uh, the most untouched territories of. Uh, security and 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 also understand from that perspective as well. So yeah, uh, I I do try to understand the approach uh, purely unconventional, purely a new approach. Or maybe there will be students in 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 my uh, audience or across the board who will be also interested in sharing my experiences with how to approach international relations. You are purely an academic uh, and a good, uh, basically a good scholar or or a good officer in making. So we wish you all the best. Thank you for joining you in. So I'll see you the other side. Sure. Bye. Bye. Take care.